can you steal me on the case that Hal 9000 from Space Odyssey was doing the right thing? So, you know, so for people who haven't seen 2001 Space Odyssey, Hal 9000 is uh, very kind of um, focused on the mission, cares a lot about the mission, and uh, kind of wants to hurt the astronauts that try to get in the way of the mission. I think he was doing what he was programmed to do, which was just to follow the mission, but didn't have a sense of, you know, a broader duty. You could, I mean, he, he was- What's the broader duty exactly? Uh, that, Maintaining the the well-being of astronauts? Yeah, or, or giving them another option. I think he viewed them as like completely dis- expen- expendable rather than say- Not completely, or, it's a trade-off. Well, so, he, so like a doctor has to make decisions like this too. You, you're, yeah. you're restricted on the resources. You have to make life and death decisions. Yeah. So maybe HAL 9000 had a long-term vision of what is good for the civilization back at home. Maybe a, a, a deontogenic vision of what was the best duty uh, for, for the genetics, you could say. May, What's deontogenic It's mean? a word I made up in the book. Is like, what is your genetic duty? Is like that when you think of my your DNA, right? What are you supposed to do with it? Which is kind of the the value of life. But if Hal was a uh, silicon based version of genetics, which is just his own maintenance of himself and self survival, you could argue he's doing the right thing for himself. But I think a human in that circumstance might have tried to find a way to, uh, even if the astronauts don't agree with the mission to figure out somebody to get them on a different spacecraft to, to go away or something versus just say, well, you're in the way of the mission. I'll just, you have to die is I think, uh, but accommodation can always be made to your point with doctors. Like some, sometimes you'd like to save three people, but you can only save two Yeah, and you have to at some point pick. But I think uh, that's since it's a false dichotomy. I think Hal didn't, wasn't programmed to, and didn't try to find a, a third solution. Perhaps the six like Stuart Russell proposes this idea that AI systems should have, self-doubt they should be always uncertain in their final decision and that would help Hal sort of get out of the local uh, the local optimum of the this, this is the mission like always be a little bit like hmm I'm not sure if this is the right thing and then you're forced to kind of contend with other humans with other entities on what is the right decision um so like the the, the worst stuff the worst thing about decisions from that perspective is uh, if you're extremely confident and you're stubborn and immovable, right? And then, but it's programming doubt is that sounds complicated. That sounds like go wrong. Yeah, so many <laughs> ways. Like this. You can go wrong either way. If you're too confident, you won't see the other options. If you have too much doubt, you won't move. You'll be paralyzed by the options. So you need some middle ground, which I think is what most people experience every day. Is we all love the concept of being a steadfast, uh, resolute leader, making big decisions quickly and without question. But at the same time, we know people can be blinded to things they're missing if they're if they're too headstrong. So, yeah. so how would you improve Hal Nine Thousand? I think I, I would include other because Hal is one program, much like we do for humans. You, you get feedback from other humans before you make a decision that affects all of them. So I think. Hal could have gotten feedback from other AI systems that said, well, is this, are there other options here? And done it probably very quickly. Or you could even, you know, embed a programming system where the AI has a primary function, but at times of uncertainty, queries a series of other programmed AIs to ask for a consensus almost, almost like a democracy of the AI. But since it's all programmed, you could bring it all together and say there's a primary, but it only activates the parliament, if you will, for a decision when needed. Now, I don't know how you program dramatically different AIs all in one system that are, are different enough, but, yeah, conceptually it's possible. Of course, that can lead to you know logjam and government and parliament doesn't do yep. anything or Congress doesn't do anything. Yep. Yeah, so it, there's trade offs, but uh, it's one idea. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. That I'm really, I find really compelling the idea. I'd love to set that up in my own life at some point. Is um, so you're stuck there on a spaceship yeah. with an AI system. And it's just the two of you, and you have to figure it out. I love that challenge. I love that um, almost a really deep human conflict of through conversation have to arrive at something. You you really try to understand what well, survival is at stake. You have to try, try to understand the other being. Mm-hmm. Now you think it's just a robot. We keep saying like, like it's just programmed to the, but you know what? When you talk to another human. It's just a bag of meat, you know. It's, and, then, and then you disagree and you're like, you know, everybody 
starts using terms like how dumb can you be mm. how ignorant can you be <laughs> yeah come on this is the right way what are you talking about this is your what you're talking about is insane and when the stakes go up when when it's life and death you have to convince another person first you have to understand another person in this case case you have to understand the, the other the machine without knowing how it was programmed because yeah. as a programmer even i mean this is very much true for the for, for these lego robots i really make sure that everything is that's programmed um is sufficiently large and has a sufficient degree of uncertainty where i'm constantly surprised i don't know how it works i kind of know how it works but i'm surprised constantly and there there's a human component of trying to figure each other out and if it's high stakes life and death through conversation i mean to me that's actually what makes a great companion out in space is like you're both in charge of each other's life yeah. and you both don't quite know how each other works and also you don't treat each other as a servant so i don't know if hal hal was treated that way a little bit where you're like, uh, yeah, like a servant as opposed to a friend, a companion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a teammate, you know? Because um, I think th the worst part about treating an AI system or, or, or another human being as a servant is what it does to you. If you treat them as a means to an end rather than end in of itself, then you've debased them and- And like lessen the humanity in yourself. Yeah, at the same time. Which is, which is, I mean, that's why they talked about kids have to be polite to Alexa, um, because they find if they're, you know, if people are, if kids are rude to AI systems, they actually that. It's a bad uh, sign, right? It's it's a bad sign, and it develops the wrong thing in terms of how they treat other uh, human beings.